Hey, welcome back to our show. This is Beyond the Sermon, the first of its kind for us here at Casting Us Podcast. And as we gather again, we would like to remind you that this is uh, two pastors who are gathering together. Um, we are now this sun or this morning talking about things that we might not have been able to talk about or didn't have time to talk about in our sermons over the last weekend. Um, so if you have questions, we highly recommend listening to our sermons. If you want to go to Shirley, uh, Emmanuel Shirley's webpage, you can hear all of the wonderful sermons that uh, Pastor Rudat puts up there. Um, and usually they drop on Facebook in the next week, usually within the first couple of days. Um, if you would like to hear my sermons, they are not broadcasted audibly or uh, through just an audio file. They're on Facebook or not Facebook, well, Facebook usually by Monday, but um, YouTube during the, the service time and, and thereafter. So you can always catch up on, on our whole entire service there and see that from Maribel. Uh, as you have an opportunity to go through the sermon, um, and this is just a good practice, maybe to start off the show, we could do a continual reminder of this every show. When you're in church and you're, you're going to sit for the sermon, it, it's not a bad idea to open up your Bible and, and go to the text I know a lot of our churches, myself included, we print the text out in a in a pamphlet for you or on a sheet of paper. Um, but I'm a I'm a fan. Uh, I'm just a very big fan of writing in your Bible. Um, you carry your notes as you meditate on God's Word with you as you continue to use that Bible through through your life. Um, and uh, it's a, it's a really nice thing to be able to have your notes down there to say when I when I last read this verse this is what I was thinking this is how the Lord struck me and and how He gave me His grace and and then to be able to come back and say wow that changed a little bit or I couldn't remember that and I'm glad I did um, so have your Bible there when you're in church when you're sitting listening to the sermon um, open up to the to the verses that are use, that that are being referenced and if they use other references to to kind of bring in more flavor write them down because you might want to go back and say hey we got some things things going on here. So uh, yeah, my other I would add echo everything there, and I think that's a good I think good idea to write in your Bibles to take notes. Uh, my taking notes to bring your journal book and write some notes down. It doesn't offend me that someone's writing down if that's how what it takes to process. I know um, with my wife when my kids were young and uh, having difficulty with the kids and um, trying to keep her attention with what's going on and her own mind wandering, writing them in a journal, which then she can reference as she goes throughout the week. Absolutely. And so whatever you like, um, whatever your medium is to, to help remember what's going on in the sermon and, and what can be done in the sermon, um, yep. just use that so that you can bring it to the table and have a good conversation afterwards. And this yeah. is the conversation afterwards. So welcome to Beyond the Sermon. All right, let's uh, uh, start off by reading this text that we read. This is from first, oh, this is should be it's wrong Peter that I got here, the first Peter. Right Peter, wrong book. Right Peter, wrong book. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 4 to 10. Chapter 2. Chapter 2, verses 4 to 10. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, As you have come to him, the living stone rejected by God, but chosen, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also, like living stones, are being built up in a spiritual house to, to be a holy priesthood in order to bring spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who believes in him will certainly not be put to shame. Therefore, for you who believe, this is an honor. But for those who do not believe, the stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone over which they stumble, and a rock over which they fall. Because they continue to disobey the word, they stumble over it, and that is the consequence appointed for them. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a, the people who are God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. At one time you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. At one time you were not shown mercy, but now you have been shown mercy. So. Great text. Um, I, I guess maybe I want to just throw out there that my, my sermon theme um, that uh, I, I toyed with was a special people. Mm. And, and that was my, my theme going forward on this. I know that... Um, 
Um, there was a, there's so much there. I mean, I even for a minute even can kind of considered having my sermon theme a Rolling Stone. <laughs> but yeah, that might have fallen flat on some ears. <laughs> <laughs> so uh like let's just talk about your your what was your law that you used what were some of the your law got your law nuggets or things that you wanted people to confess their sins which commandment and then which how did you what was the gospel nuggets in the test and let's just begin by saying well i'll admit well, why don't we talk about yours first we can talk about mine after that um but uh it for me i really struggled with how are you going to put in all of the aspects of this text? Because he's talking to people who are very familiar with a lot of these concepts, whereas our people maybe not quite so familiar and maybe maybe have heard it over and over, but don't appreciate the symbolism and the significance of these things. So go ahead. Yeah, so yeah, I struggled with the sermon. I, I wasn't necessarily happy with the way that I went with it when I preached it. Um, I mean, I, I finished it, so I, there's that. Um I, I kind of toyed with the beginning of my sermon, um, going back to Pink Floyd, and um, and his uh, "A Brick in the Wall" song, and and you know the children singing, you know, we don't need no education, uh, teachers, we don't need no thought control, um, and then eventually the, the that that chorus line, all we are is just another brick in the wall, and and I kind of painted that throughout the sermon, this picture of the. The world, the society wants us to all be the same. They, they want us to have all the sharp edges and they want us to be straight and, and they want us to fit in with everybody else. And to do that, they, they allow certain things and they force certain other things and they disallow other, you know, and, and, and so the, the, the gen, or I should say the general law was we're in a world where, where they don't really embrace people who are special, who are themselves. Um, but we have a world that wants you to conform to whatever the new fad is. Um, and they will force you to do that. They will force you to conform. And so that was my general law. My, my specific law is that we do that in the church. My specific law is that we, we, you know, even in the church where we're supposed to be able to live, where we're supposed to be gathered and what binds us together is the blood of Christ. We, we want everyone to look like the outside of the church, all the same brick. Mm -hmm. And, and I said, you know, that's and then moving into the, the general gospel. I said, you know, the, the Lord is a living stone. They don't call him the living brick. Um, and so I used an illustration of um, when they were building the temple and they asked for the cornerstone. And I said, uh, uh, what was brought up was a cornerstone that had all odd edges on it. And, and it didn't look, it didn't look even at all. Um, and the builders rejected that they they threw it down into the Kidron Valley and they they decided to to use one of the stones that they had with all the perfect corners and once they put it in the cornerstone and they tried to build the temple they're like nothing is lining up things aren't working the way it should and so they went to the quarry and said we need another cornerstone and the quarry said we sent you one and they're like well that one wasn't right it didn't have the the right corners and everything else and the, the quarry said did you try it and and so that was my my lead into the general the general gospel that you know, we have all these problems in the world and that every time we, you know, we live in the world and they try to force us to conform, they try to force us into this new mold. Um, and you could use that for anything today. I wasn't necessarily yeah. specific in saying LGBTQ or racism or privileged society, right. or you can use any of those things. They try to fit you into that to, to conform you to this. I said, I said, really the, the cure to our problems is Christ who who doesn't conform and he he doesn't look like the world what the world would need and yet on him everything is built and then he takes these stones and and I and I guess I went to the specific gospel which was which pr pretty much said um you are all misshapen you are all you know come with your baggage and your problems and your things and your personalities and I said it's not going to change. I said, we're not always going to agree and we're not always going to play nice. And we're not always. And I said, but, but the, the, the job of the church isn't to force us all into the same mold. The job of the church is to say, we're all different and we're held together by the blood of Christ that forgives our sins and brings us together and, and holds us close. Yeah. And that through, through that, we find that we are a building being built 
so that we can continue to serve our Lord. Um, that that was kind of where mm. where I went. That was good. Okay. Is there what what did you really want to talk about, but you didn't have time to talk about? <laughs> um, I actually I I really wanted to talk about. Um, and I just don't think my people were ready for it. And that's not a slam on them at all. It's just, how do you, how do you work your way into, to some of the flavor of the text? Um, when you see Peter is, is he, I mean, he's, he's really playing off his own name that was given to him by the Lord. He's playing off of the temple and it's destruction. And three days later, it will be rebuilt um, as the Lord Lord says, I will be raised, right? I will raise it again. I'll destroy this temple and raise it again. Um, he, he plays off this idea of, of the differences between the stones and, and that beauty of the stones of being, being a spiritual house. And, and I didn't really dive into any, any of that. I really focused on the last half of, of the calling and the vocation. So, mm, Okay. What about you? What was your your sermon theme? Uh, my, I did have a sermon theme and two parts to it. I know you're not a big fan of two parts. I'm not a parts fan. I don't always do two parts, but this one was two parts, and it was uh, God builds His temple with living stones. And so the uh, first part was um, we have a living foundation, and then the second part is the royal priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices. So I really my specific law. I really started right off the gate. I took a little bit different approach with the cornerstone aspect where if you don't get Jesus right, you, your whole um, spiritual system falls. So I did do a lot of the generic, you know, we're living in a world that thinks that if we all believe in God, we're all going to the same place. And so there was a lot of, a lot of I took a lot of time, and that was re- really where the lie is. If you think that we all believe in Jesus, that we're all, you know, this is all okay. No, you have to get Jesus right. Why do you need Jesus? And then, well, why do you need Jesus? Because you're a sinner. You have to get the sin part right, too, because otherwise Jesus isn't your Savior. So that was my the first part where I talked about that living stone um, because of Jesus. And then the drawing, the um, uh, other law section was, once you were not a people, but now you are a people. And that's the sobering reminder, without Christ, it doesn't matter what your last name is. Doesn't matter where you're living. You God doesn't look at you and say that's my people, but because of Christ, you have it. And then, uh, obviously, the sp- the specific gospel there was, you are God's people because of Christ. This is who you are, and not only that, you are a royal priesthood. And so then I talked about the priesthood and uh, of the Levites, and I talked about what it means to be a priest now and very specific in very broad things like we our whole lives are meant to be sacrifices so yeah i talked about you know giving but that was i sh- i kind of like blew that off you know i said yes it's talk yes it is talking about giving to the lord but it's your whole life it's every time you are denying yourself and thinking of somebody else kids every time you think of your parents before yourself parents every time you think of your spouse over yourself and all these these are times you're sacrificing and how difficult that is to do and we have a sinful nature so that and uh the the gospel there was is um the remember who you are you are a priesthood you are a royal priesthood and, and then i talked about the two aspect of a royalty of power and wealth since prince charles was crowned on saturday Good so then we talked about uh, even though he's a limited monarch but we still saw power and we still saw money um, and those are the things we have riches. We have God who is on our side. Even if we don't have a lot of money, we have a God who's on our side. Can you put a dollar f- sign on that? And then we have peace with God, which is something that um, gives us power too, because now we can live our lives knowing that we are at peace with God. We don't have this burden of guilt that we're carrying around with us all over the place. But yeah, those are the only, th- that's all I talked about really was Jesus, the cornerstone, you're a temple. And you are a royal priesthood. So all this holy nation stuff and the, the, all of those things, the, the stumbling the, that Christ is that rock that causes them to stumble is, I, I talked about that briefly when we talked about how God is just, if you don't get your um, Jesus right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fall. So, so is there something that you would really wish that if you were going to preach it again, you would have maybe focused on a little bit more or, or um, came back and said, I, I really wish I would have flushed this out? You know, I oftentimes have that 
I don't think I felt that way this time. I, um, but I, uh, um, yeah. So uh, just to be honest, there are times when I'm like, man, I really wish. Sure. I had this, or you had you had a thought as you're preaching it. You're like, oh man, Ruda, and then you, then you realize that's God's gift just to you. Uh, what God's saying through your preaching, you are also feeding yourself. So, um, but I didn't have that this time. No, I had a I had a an issue with. Um I shouldn't say an issue, but my, my biggest thing, it was in my mind, it kept, re- cause I had preached on this before. Um, when I did a sermon series during Lent, mm-hmm. um, working on what is the church. And so I, 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 I really hit home the idea of this text in the vocational aspect of church. And so it was, um, it was really tough to, not come back to this section and see my notes from, from the last one and be like, Oh, well, I'll just slip right back into that. So, so there was an issue of, um, you know, trying to find one of the other hundred sermons that you can preach on this text yeah. <laughs> when I, I already preached at least one of them. <laughs> yeah. So any questions so far from our listeners, we've got, um, no, no questions. You have a little bit of time. Yeah. So this is kind I'm of where to hear us again. Yeah, I, just have to- I do. I know uh, Katie was talking about she's writing notes, and sometimes that's difficult. And I think, I think it's just a if if that's something you want to do. My encouragement, and per- perhaps Pastor Harley would have some encouragement as well. Just just do it. I think when my wife, one of the things she saw was the kids weren't quite so like mom, mom. If they realized that she's busy, but um, yeah, maybe you may have different kids, that, and you may have different needs. Those kids might have different needs than our kids did, but. Um, Anyway, yeah, there is something just to be keep... said about having an example for them. Yeah. Yeah. And there's also something to be said, like in the case of, of Katie, um, grandparents. <laughs> Utilize <laughs> those grandparents. <laughs> yeah, I know they sit a little further back in the church, but uh, um, utilize the grandparents, you know, yeah. split split your forces. Yeah. Um, so there's there's some of that, and they would enjoy love having their kids sit with them. Um, so so definitely, but again, but again, I think I think taking notes down and and here's the thing in a sermon that when you when you talk about a sermon and and when we live with it because and you're going to hear this probably uh, throughout this this type of podcast when we do it every week, we're living with the text every week. Um, I mean, and we're 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 I don't know about you, but I'm looking at it on Sunday afternoon. And then I don't I'm, look at it I'm, Sunday afternoon, but Monday morning, Monday morning is the first time I look at it. Yeah. I, I look at it Sunday afternoon already. Um, and then, you know, throughout the week, every morning, that's my, my first thing I read as my devotion. I go back and I, I reread the text and I maybe add a few notes and then I am blessed and I'm, I'm going to say it is a blessing for me. I'm, I can't speak for any of the other brothers who participate in this, but, but as a blessing for me, um, I get a chance in the week to sit down with the brothers and we, we translate, we go right to the Greek um, or if it's Hebrew, if we're, we're reading the old Testament and we, yeah. we translate it and we discuss it and we kind of dig deep in, into what the, the Lord is saying. And there's a lot of times we have conversations that never make their way. <laughs> <laughs> Nor should they. <laughs> Sometimes we're just having a good time. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah but, but there are so many things and and in this yeah. text and specifically in this text i think there were there were a lot of um nuances that i i don't think made their way into our sermons that so beautifully could have made their way into our sermons in a, in a better way just that the um so and here's a case in point um the Lord talks about a living stone. He talks about we're living stones. We're being built up into a spiritual house. And then he calls us a priesthood. So, and you could, you can say a holy priesthood later on, he's going to say a Royal priesthood. And you think about that and you're like, what's the significance of it? Right. And, and the, the, the go-to I think is, well, what did the priests do? Well, they offered prayers and they, they they shared the word of the Lord. They did so. We're this royal priesthood, which we offer prayers and we share the word of the Lord, and and that's true. I'm I'm not discrediting any of that. 
Yeah, I did but talk. You about, to, yep, but you I, talk I did talk about, about this. Yeah, I did talk about that. The um, the presence of God, how the priests were here. They were they were able to participate in some. Of, is that what you're talking about? They were able, like some of these sacrifices that people gave. Well, the priest was able to, you know, and it's right. the first. It's the best of the animal, and the priest gets to get that, or um, the priest right. gets to be in the a, a closer presence of God every day, and then the one. The altar. Yeah, they eat from the altar. They eat the showbread. Yeah. They, they have this inner connection with God. I did talk about that. And then now, because of Jesus, um, the curtain has been torn in two. We have this inner presence with God. Um, yeah, and obviously we can talk. I mean, that would yeah. be a great a great children's devotion, which I didn't do, would be to talk Absolutely. about the chancel area. Like, why do we have, why does it seem like pastors closer to God when, when, when uh, um, you guys are far back there? And then you realize... When you take communion, the way they design these churches, the everyone gets close to God. We are all going up to the chancel. We are all going up to the altar. Uh, here is this, you know, this uh, blessed communion and presence with God. I'm sorry, I interrupted. Well, and no, that's fine because that's where I was going. Is the idea that you're, you're this priesthood that, and and if you go back into Leviticus and you'll see what the what the order of the priests did and what they are able to do, they're able to eat from the the altar from the offering. They're able to participate in that sacrament. Um, you see this beautiful picture of this is this is what it is to be to be built into the living stone. You are now participating not just as his spokesperson, but you are receiving his sacrament. Um, and so this is a, a very sacramental building um, where you are built up. Um, and and it's these offerings that are brought and then shared with the priesthood um, as the Lord continues to to grow that. So, I mean, those that's just one area where you could go. And then, I mean, going and just jumping into the second half of the that um, verse 8, right? Um, how, you know, how much discrepancy and how many things can be added there where, where you see because they continued to disobey the word, they stumbled over it, and that is the consequence appointed for them. You know, how many people are like, well, then they're saying that God predestined them I mean, that's usually where a lot of people. Yeah, we'll take a lot that. of people take that. They say God predestined them to go to 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 be uh, stumbling, to go to hell, and and that's not what the text is saying. Mm-hmm. Um, the text is saying something so beautiful as those who who throw away the word, those who who deny the Christ, those who turn their back on on what the Lord has given for them. What is for them is to stumble. Because that's what comes. That that's the consequence is what is theirs. Yeah, um, right. Because it's connected to that action. Thank you, because that's jarring the memory loose. Because we really did hammer in that, like, how is it, how is this? You, how could this prove predestination? Why doesn't it prove? And then we said, well, let, let's look at the text where God doesn't predestine people to fall. He just predestined the consequence. This is what happens when you right. reject the Son. Right. And then we had a bunch of conversations. If you have your Bible open, you notice that in the Bible. Um, that whole prophecy from, uh, what is it, Isaiah, um, they lowercase a lot of things. And you're like, who are we talking about? <laughs> Remember that conversation? Where yeah, like, like, so, uh, who's that chosen? Who's that precious? Who's, you know, um, capitalization goes a long way, folks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, like, oh, they disobey the word. And you think, well, is that the, and yeah, that was the one of those where we like, well, I think words should really should be capitalized here. Just the yeah. way that that Peter talks about it, because yeah. obviously in the Greek they only capitalize proper names. I don't yeah. think. Yeah, or or beginnings of sentences depending yeah. on on the tradition that you have. But yeah, um, but yeah, otherwise, yeah, they don't have like we we capitalize things to highlight. They only do the proper name. So yeah, so yeah, I mean, there's a lot there just in that that beginning section where where we can come back and say those are things I didn't even touch on. Um, I mean, I don't even know if they would be something that the uh, the people would have enjoyed to even have me touch on because I. It, it, we we both talked about Christ, and he's the really the, he's the subject yeah. of the sentence. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We are the object because of him. We are built up into this living stone, um, and we we get his characteristics, and that is something that God proclaims that we are. He is a priest. We're a priest. Uh, he he was a king. We are kings. Uh, it's all of these the attributes. Uh, of Christ in this section that are listed are are ours. Yeah. And at one time you weren't, and now you are. Um, yeah. You had made a comment of that actually uh, really beautifully. And I know when our, when we studied um, that difference between the Lord 
uh, specifically highlighting us as a people of individuals as opposed to the conglomerate group of nations. Although, I mean, he does say that we are a, um, a holy nation, but when he gets down into the nitty gritty of the gospel proclamation, he says, once you were not a people, but now you are a people. Um, once you had no mercy, now you have been shown mercy. And you had made that that beautiful connection, which I guess I never really thought about, that that he switches from nation, the conglomerate group, to to a bunch of the individuals uh, and I did use that in my sermon uh, to some extent that we are a bunch of individuals brought together um, and, and that the Lord is looking at us in that way. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, any other places? I, no one's really chatting up the chat box here for questions. Either they didn't listen to our sermons. Which so they're is- like, first time I've encountered the text. I didn't know it was in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Sure. Well, it, we're just trying this out. I think uh, we are. Um, I do appreciate talking talking about it again, um, and uh, I do appreciate getting the cobwebs out of there. Because then, the more times you are um, put something on your head in your head, the more possibility it's going to stick there in your heart. So I, I do appreciate going through it again. Absolutely. Uh, you had made before we leave. Maybe maybe you want to walk us through because uh, I found a benefit of it. I I really found it was awesome. Um, the most translations, I think, um, uh, when it, when it talks about, uh, part of the benefits of, of being part of this church, being part of the, the gospel ministry is that we are part of, of God's possessions we're, we're for his safekeeping. But then it says that we may proclaim and most translations say the praises of him who called us out of darkness. And you had a, a really good um, kind of, and it connected to the Greek word, I know, but it was just this beautiful presentation of, of what that kind of looks like. We want to walk us through that, and then we have a question that we can we can hit online too. I'm um, I'm I'm drawing a blank. It it was the idea of virtues. Are, are you talking about when we were together? Yeah. Oh man, I didn't write anything down. Well, I did because you had gold in there. I mean, it was just awesome. Um, so it was, it, aretas is the is the word, and it's in Greek. It, it's, and they they can translate it praises, but it's really the idea of virtues. Um, and the part that you had written down that was so beautiful that I just kind of piggybacked off of was was, um, virtues are not necessarily ours; they're given. These are things given to us. And you had said uh, and made the connection to, you know, wearing medals. Someone oh, else. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so you Go want ahead. to take it from there if you. No, I don't. Go ahead. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just, it was just such a beautiful thing because it brought back into my mind um, wearing my dad's my dad's oh. medals when, when he was in the military and he had his dress blues and, and just wearing those medals and wearing those things that belonged to someone else. They was something that they did. But I'm sharing it. I'm 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 wearing it. Um, I'm wearing the virtues of someone else who lived for me. And I I just thought, as a holy nation, as a royal priesthood, as as this this body of Christ, we are we are wearing Christ's virtues in the world. Um, they're not our virtues. They're not things that we have done. Um, yeah. And and yeah, praises wraps that up, I suppose. Yeah. I, I mean, but. Just that that little nuance. Yeah, it is. Uh, like, what what are we pro- what are we talking about? How how much is God good for me? Or are we talking about who Christ is uh, and what He has done for me? Rather than, oh, look at me, I'm I'm so blessed. I have this and I have that. How many of us would say we're blessed because we're we're struggling, or we're blessed that we have peace in the midst of chaos? Um, but th- or how many of us would say we're blessed because we have heaven? Because you're always thinking of right now. So the <laughs> Yeah, the virtues of Christ wearing wearing as medals. Uh, yeah, because I we uh, yesterday we heard uh, one of our brothers preach, and he also mentioned the medal thing that I talked about, and I didn't write any of that down. So that's my that's my fault. I had that was, good that I had good cool. nuggets, gold nuggets, and now it's gone. I got to write that stuff down. You should in the Bible. In my Bible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the question that was brought up, and this is a really actually <laughs> a fabulous question. So thank you. Um, the question is, how do you go about deciding which text of the three 
to use for a sermon. So, um, so if you if you're unfamiliar with how liturgical services work, um, liturgical services uh, usually have three three readings. There is an Old Testament reading. There is a New Oops. Testament reading, uh, usually from one of the epistles, and then there's a gospel reading as we walk our way through one of the four gospels. Um, John usually interspersed between a three year cycle, and then we we in the three year cycle we focus on Matthew uh, one year, Mark the other, Luke the other. Uh, Old Testament, when you get into the Easter season, when you get into uh, right up to Pentecost, a lot of the Old Testament readings from, from the resurrection to Pentecost come from the book of Acts. So you, you have a lot of readings that are coming from the book of Acts instead of from the Old Testament. But then you come back to the Old Testament cycle where you're, you're reading uh, the promises of Christ's coming and God working in the lives of Old Testament people, his promises. How do you pick which one so there's there's a couple of ways that um you can go about doing this um and i i would have to say it depended on my it depended on my my week it depends on my position in ministry um and it also depended on how many years <laughs> i had been out um for me i think when i first started the ministry um i always would decide um which of the three, depending on which was easiest <laughs> for me to write, um, which, which caused less anxiousness when I looked at the text. I'm like, yeah, I can, I can definitely preach law gospel out of here. No problem without having to think about it. Um, that's where I began. That, I think that's where I began. Then as I got more comfortable in doing ministry and, and preaching and, I started challenging myself because I'm like, okay, there's only so many times you can say the same thing. I started to challenge myself and work at harder text. Um, and, and then um, where we ended up now is um, we kind of, we kind of go in a cycle. Um, we, we try to say, okay, what season we would really like to hit the gospels in this season because they're really, really, the gospel is always great. <laughs> the gospel readings are always good, but we, we look at it and say, this would be really nice. Um, but then we also look back and say, I've had a lot of exposure to the Greek in the last couple of weeks or the last month. Um, it would really be nice to brush off some of the cobwebs of of Hebrew and work in, work in the Hebrew language. Yeah. I don't know what else you have. Uh, well, that, that you have to that. <clears throat> the way that I would decide, I think when I was uh, early on in my ministry, I tried to do like you you would for one season, you would do all the Gospels and then the next season you do all the epistles and then you just do the old testament and you just said you didn't even tie it to the season you just started the pattern and then once you get a repertoire of, of sermons and texts and things then you say well last year or last time i preached on this it was i preached on the gospel so now i'm going to preach on the epistles and you kind of force yourself to do so in nine years you're going to get all three of them all three of the lessons and you, god's people would too and then for a while there i i said um to myself i said or I think it was a, a practice that other pastors were doing was just preach on the gospel every week, but then sometimes just bring in the other ones um, from time to time. Maybe use them as introductions, maybe use them as illustrations. But you would you would preach on the gospel every year, especially when I was doing the the one year. You would preach on the gospel every year, but then you would add in the other ones um, on throughout the week. So now, yeah, like right now we have our we kind of vote and we just say well. During this season, we would like to do the Old Testament, or I'm kind of sick of reading the Greek, so let's ignore it for a while and uh, do the Hebrew. And uh, we we've... Really ignore the Greek. We just <laughs> we, just, we want to focus on our our Hebrew skills. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of times it's arbitrary and uh, it isn't quite as systematic as, as people are led to believe. And sometimes um, sometimes you're reading a text and you're going, you know, uh, where my people are at this is the text they need to hear. And so you just right. you go there. So, And we're not bound to that. I mean, even when we do a translation with our group, um, I know you have done it and I've done it Yeah, where we're like, I, there, we're doing something special this week. Um, and because we're doing something special this week, here's my focus. Um, and, and none of these texts fit with that. So I am, I'm going to preach something else, but we still study together the text those weeks we do double duty. We study two texts, which I know that's adds an extra 
a little bit of work from the one day that we have to actually work. You know, can the- I just say something though? Like uh, when you, when before I was doing the exegesis on your own, when you're just you, it is so easy just to not spend the time into it. So if you have, if you have this muscle of you're doing it every week with the brothers, no matter what, um, then when you have to do two texts a week, it isn't quite as of a difficult as say if you're doing it all by yourself and all of a sudden one week you got to do two because a lot of times on two you start taking shortcuts and of course that's that's a big no-no it just it never works and we keep falling for that trap of oh well i can skimp on god's word this week and then you you get up there and and you preach and you um it it does feed god's people because you're preaching god's word but on on the flip side you as a preacher don't feel like you're doing your job and i think I think, this is my assumption, but I think God's people can tell when the text has affected their pastor or when he is just going through the motions and just, boom. If, it, if this text is personal, it has touched him in a spiritual way where he's like, I got to get this. This is a good message. You're going to hear Jesus again here or this concept that Peter is talking about of you being stones and you're being built up into Christ and it's it's different than the rest of the world and, and, and all those things. And... and um, all those kinds of things where you, I think God's people can tell the difference. Yeah. You can and, 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 and I like what you're saying that, you know, um, having it and being accountable to somebody when we do these studies is a, is it really goes a long way. Um, otherwise you, you do fall into that habit of taking the shortcuts, trying to find other people uh, who tell you what you should be thinking. And then you try to pass it off as your thoughts. And, and uh, I know, I know, I'm not under any illusion um, that there are people who do that and there are pastors who do that and that there are pastors who have fed their flocks for a good long time doing that. Um, I there's, there's something just deep down inside of me that cringes at that. And, and I have a knee jerk reaction to, to not do that. Um, I don't like to preach the same sermon twice. Um, I mean, I've been known to, if I planned a sermon during the winter and all of a sudden this it snows, I don't reuse it. <laughs> I don't go back and be like, well, I'll just reuse that sermon the next week, you know, because I put all that effort into it. Um, you know, there there is something so precious, at least to me, about walking every week in the lectionary um, and, and opening it up and, to, and to putting in the time to sit at the Lord's feet and say, my people might not be doing this and they're all they're going to get on Sunday is, is the 15, 20, 25 minute sermon that I've been living with the entire week that, that God has blessed me with. I mean, that's really how I, I, I treat my job. I love my job. I get, I get paid a living wage. Thank you. By the way, I get paid a living wage to, to live at the feet of Christ and, 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 the hardest part of any sermon writing is how much do you have to cut out? <laughs> which is why we have this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So, which is now sitting at like 47 minutes. So we took a 20 minute sermon and now we've talked about that for well, how long 40... does it take us to translate and talk about it? Just think about, <laughs> yeah. just, just think about that. Um, yeah. All right. So, I mean, well, Thank you very much for listening to our podcast. Um, And you can join us on Thursday as we go through the book of Esther uh, together. And uh, we hope to see you next week on Beyond the Sermon.